It is a war of words, and it's getting even uglier this morning, between Republicans, the president, and the House Intelligence Chair, Adam Schiff. The president started it off, at least today, on Twitter, saying this. Congressman Adam Schiff, who spent two years knowingly and unlawfully lying and leaking, we don't have evidence of that, though, should be forced to resign from Congress. And just a short time ago, Schiff faced off with Republicans on his committee in the middle of a committee hearing on this. Watch. Your actions, both past and present, are incompatible with your duty as chairman of this committee, which alone in the House of Representatives has the obligation and authority to provide effective oversight of the U.S. intelligence community. As such, we have no faith in your ability to discharge your duties in a manner consistent with your constitutional responsibility and urge your immediate resignation as chairman of the committee. Mr. Chairman, this letter is signed by all nine members of the uh, Republican side of the House, of the, of the committee, and I ask unanimous consent to be entered into the record of today's hearing. I yield back. Without objection, um, I'm going to turn to our witnesses who are the subject of the hearing today, but before I do, uh, and as, it, as you have chosen, uh, instead of addressing the hearing to simply attack me, uh, consistent with the President's attacks, uh, I do want to respond in this way. My colleagues may think it's okay that the Russians offered dirt on the Democratic candidate for president as part of what was described as the Russian government's effort to help the Trump campaign. You might think that's okay. My colleagues might think it's okay that when that was offered to the son of the president, who had a pivotal role in the campaign, that the president's son did not call the FBI, he did not adamantly refuse that foreign help. No, instead that son said that he would love the help of the Russians. You might think it's okay that he took that meeting. You might think it's okay that Paul Manafort, the campaign chair, someone with great experience in running campaigns, also took that meeting. You might think it's okay that the president's son-in-law also took that meeting. You might think it's okay that they concealed it from the public. You might think it's okay that their only disappointment after that meeting was that the dirt they received on Hillary Clinton wasn't better. You might think that's okay. You might think it's okay that when it was discovered a year later that they lied about that meeting and said it was about adoptions. You might think it's okay that the president is reported to have helped dictate that lie. You might think that's okay. I don't. You might think it's okay that the campaign chairman of a presidential campaign would offer information about that campaign to a Russian oligarch in exchange for money or debt forgiveness. You might think that's okay. I don't. You might think it's okay that that campaign chairman offered polling data, campaign polling data to someone linked to Russian intelligence. I don't think that's okay. You might think it's okay that the president himself called on Russia to hack his opponent's emails if they were listening. You might think it's okay that later that day, in fact, the Russians attempted to hack a server affiliated with that campaign. I don't think that's okay. You might think that it's okay that the president's son-in-law sought to establish a secret back channel of communications with the Russians through a Russian diplomatic facility. I don't think that's okay. You might think it's okay that an associate of the president made direct contact with the GRU through Guccifer II and WikiLeaks and considered, that is considered a hostile intelligence agency. You might think that it's okay a senior campaign official was instructed to reach that associate and find out what that hostile intelligence agency had to say in terms of dirt on his opponent. You might think it's okay that the national security advisor designate secretly conferred with a Russian ambassador about undermining U.S. sanctions, and you might think it's okay he lied about it to the FBI. You might say that's all okay. You might say that's just what you need to do to win. But I don't think it's okay. So what does this have to do with the Mueller report? And what does it mean for what Congress will do now? You can see clear problems, at least in that one committee. Joining me right now, Democratic Senator Bob Casey of Pennsylvania. Senator, thank you so much for being here. What do you make of 
what's happening in the House right now. I mean, the president and some House Republicans, they say Adam Schiff lied so he should resign his position on the committee and even Congress. Well, Kate, I think it's a partisan smear job on, on Adam Schiff. I know him. I know him to be not only a very serious legislator who cares about the security of the country, but he was a federal prosecutor. He understands uh, the rule of law. He understands not just what it takes to uh, adhere to the rule of law, but also what undergirds our democracy. He's very concerned, as you can tell by that, that cataloging of troubling behavior, He's very concerned about what happened to the 2016 election, and he wants to make sure it never happens again. I hope, I hope that Republicans in the House and the Senate will at least make that commitment, that they will do everything in their power to never allow the Russians to interfere again and to never allow Americans to have the kind of context. I don't even care what, what, it, what it has to do with the ultimate determination by uh, for this particular investigation. We yeah. should never allow the Russians to interfere in our elections. And, and uh, the chairman understands that, and he also understands the rule of law. He's not elected uh, to be a, a partisan um, warrior. He's elected to be what he is, which is a, uh, a legislator who cares about the security of the country, just as he did when he was a prosecutor. When it comes to the Mueller report and what, and, and what Democrats do now, Adam Schiff is saying, has said that even that, that there is, I think he said there is absolutely evidence of collusion. But the reality is no one knows because none of us have seen the actual Mueller report. We have the Bill Barr memo and the interp his interpretation of it, but we haven't seen it yet. Do Democrats, do you think it would be good for Democrats to slow down and pump the brakes on statements like that, though? Because does it help you? No, I, part, part of the problem here is I think <laughs> the, the terminology has gotten people off track. Uh, there's, the, the investigation was um, launched to determine whether or not there was coordination or a conspiracy. They're the two words. Mm -hmm. uh, that other word has been used a lot, but I'll use coordination and conspiracy. Apparently the finding is, is according to, to Attorney General Barr, that finding is now, has now been made, that there was no coordination or conspiracy. And frankly, that's good for the country that that, that finding came out that way because that's better. We're, we're, we're a little safer if that's the case. But here's the problem. We still have what is reported today, a more than 300-page report that's sitting there that not only should members of Congress should see, but the American people should see, to read every page and then make a determination. It might not have anything to do with criminal culpability or any kind of other uh, follow, uh, follow up actions, but at least Americans need to know long before the next election what is in that report. And then voters or citizens as voters can make their, their own determinations. You've got to see the report though, and we should see the backup evidence that undergirds any conclusion that was reached in the report, even if the conclusion doesn't speak directly to the coordination conspiracy determination. Yeah, much more to come for sure on that. I do want to ask you, though, about something that you are also, another thing you're very focused on right now, which is combating, it has to do with online, which has a lot to do with the right. Russia investigation, but combating hate and extremism online. You've got a new bill out to study how these platforms, if you will, are being used to fuel violence and hate. And understanding the problem is obviously important. But does Congress, do you think, need to do more at this point and go further at this point to put more pressure on the platforms like the Facebook, like Twitter, to tackle hate? Yeah, I think we can do this by way of this bill. All this bill does is two things. It, it asks for a study of these issues and asks for recommendations consistent with the First Amendment. We did this way back in the early 90s, 1993, right. where the Department of Commerce and Justice worked together on a report for the then telecommunications apparatus we had. Today, of course, we have social media platforms that weren't around then, and we're, we're asking for another study, really an update, because mm -hmm. of the changes in technology, to study how this happens, where, where individuals go online and start literally planning uh, attacks started with hateful rhetoric. So we need to study that, make determinations about uh, what's happening on those platforms, and then recommendations. And I think we're starting to get some 
some help on this. Facebook just made an announcement yesterday about yeah. not not allowing white supremacists to use their platform for that purpose. So it's it's frankly overdue that we study this and make recommendations, and then we'll see where we are. Yeah, but I, I think mean, this can be done to stop some of the. The, the violence we saw at Tree of Life synagogue, synagogue, synagogue in Pittsburgh as well as yeah. other places. And, and you are getting a, a lot of interest in it, especially amongst your colleagues. I mean, I noticed on your bill has gotten some pretty big interest from 2020 presidential contenders in the Senate. You, I think Cory Booker, Kamala Harris, Amy Klobuchar, and Bernie Sanders all signing on, um, which just has me wondering at this point, are you backing any particular candidate? It might hurt your chances with your bill, <laughs> but would you like to share that today? I'm, I'm always happy for co-sponsors, whether they're 2020 <laughs> candidates or not. <laughs> <laughs> well, then also, it does make me wonder, do you hope that fellow Scranton, Pennsylvania native Joe Biden jumps in the race? I hope he does. I don't know the, the final determination there, but I hope he does.